Hello everyone, this is a video lecture for Calculus 2, Section 7.3, Trig Substitution. I have one thing I want to say about this. Use a triangle. Use a triangle. That's it. Alright, end of the section, right? We're good there. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> We're going to do a lot more work. So the very first question... Seven two zero zero six. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait, 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 wait. Seven two. <laughs> yep, yep. I think that might be the first question on your homework. Is the seven two problem? Um, I was tempted to skip this one because oh, it's seven two, so you've seen it before. But it was actually kind of hard, so uh, I want to do it with you. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the rest of the section. I don't know what to say. I don't make this thing up. So first off, I convert this cosine cubed into cosine squared times cosine times the sine squared. Yeah, I know I didn't put that stuff every time. Uh, and I said, oh, guess what? This guy right here, we can convert over to 1 minus sine squared cosine squared. Just cosine, sorry. And then uh, a sine squared. Cool. And then I say, you know what? This sine squared, he'll distribute. Yeah, that's super awesome. You don't even want to look at my notes because I actually do the uh, T over 6 every time. And it is just silly long. Maybe it looks hard because I did that. I don't know. Um, it's It does not look hard now that I'm doing this, so... This is this is technically a style of doing this math. Uh, just you got to be careful uh, while doing it. And then I say, you know what? This is two separate integrals. I could just say this is sine squared times cosine. And then I've got my sine to the fourth times cosine. Yeah, super cool now. Super cool. Well, uh, in order to do this, my this is my u for uh, u substitution sine of t over 6. So my derivative actually will have that 1, 6 come to the front and sine goes to cosine, just like that, dt. Um, I chose this in particular because this makes sense here. And so just to make sure we're doing this right, I technically divide it to the other side. I get 6 times um, du over cosine of t over 6. So I'm going to use that and this when I plug it in here. So I've got my u squared, my cosine of t over 6, and then times 6 du over cosine of t over 6. And these guys cancel. But notice the 6 is being multiplied now. And so Blah, 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 same stuff. It's a 6 integral of u squared du minus, again, 6 integral of u to the 4th du. And so we got u cubed over 3 and u to the 5th over 5. Uh, it's not a definite integral, but we do have to actually plug back in my u's. So this is a 2, my u uh, sine of the t over 6, all cubed. I'm not going to make it in there, funny little notation. I'm going to leave it just the way it is, because it is fine, just the way it is. Don't let anyone tell you differently. You don't need to change. You're fine the way you are. All right. <laughs> now we're actually going to do trig sub. <laughs> so... Hey, guess what? We're in section 7.3. Trig substitution. Hey, let me give you one piece of advice. You're going to use a triangle. Okay, now let's get started on question number one. <laughs> Again, I just want to remind you, that was in the section of the homework, okay? I'm just doing the homework here, okay? This is actually number two on your homework, I bet, or something like that. I don't know. I don't pay attention to that stuff. I just use that for the book and all that whatnot, whatnot. Integral of x squared over the square root of 49 minus x squared 
uh, dx. They say, figure this thing out. Now, is there a formula for something like this? Perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, you might be able to find something in the very large integration table stuff. There's like 100 formulas or something back there. Doubtful that you can put it all in your note card. So my point is, I wouldn't just rely on a formula for something like this. Though, there are some. Uh, what you'll be seeing me do is this use a triangle thing, like I'm trying to say. And so two different ways of approaching it, I guess you can say. So there you go. Formulas, if it looks pretty familiar, if you've seen it before, maybe. Otherwise, um, do it my way. So how do I know to do trig substitution? Oh, because it's 7-3. And no, 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 because when you go to your quiz or when you go to your exam, it's not going to say that. And so how do you know? How do you know that you're supposed to use trig sub on this guy, right? I'm going to give you some hints. First off, square roots. Something squared minus something else. The same thing on both the top and bottom. So if you see a square root, that is a big indicator. If you see something squared and something else going on, big indicator. Okay? Because I'm going to draw a triangle. Now, my triangles are not the best. I'm going to try really hard this time. Yeah, there you go. Nice triangle. And I'm going to call this theta. Another version is you can call it A for angle. Either way is fine. I'm just going to use theta because that's what I do. Um, notice my, my square root part down here. The square root is telling me more than you think. You see, if I'm going to construct a triangle, and I have the square root something or other going on, notice that this is the positive version and this is the negative version of the uh, on, on the inside this must be from my hypotenuse and this must be from i don't know the opposite or the, the adjacent i don't know which one and it's kind of up to you about which one you want notice that this right here is the same as this right here and so this will actually be the same thing your opposite or your adjacent either either way is fine uh, but this is definitely your hypotenuse and so that's seven squared is what that is well, you don't put a 7 square, you just put a 7. Um, just a 7. That's your hypotenuse, just 7. I personally, whenever I see x, I put it down here as my adjacent side. Uh, though it sometimes leads to kind of a weird answer. Kind of depends on what's going on. What Whatever web assign feels like that day. Um, but I'm going to call that my adjacent. I'm going to call it the adjacent. And so what I actually have to do to solve the rest of the triangle is to find out what this is. This is a square root of hypotenuse minus the adjacent to make the opposite. Well, it's funny that it actually ends up being this thing here. Like the entirety of it is my opposite. Okay? Now, don't overthink it. I didn't just create it in thin air. I said I have, to, I have an, uh, I guess a C and I have an A and I need to find B. So I went and actually did Pythagorean theorem and I got this. Wait, didn't I just see that a second ago? Okay, so we have this cool triangle. Awesome. I guess you can almost say, just in a silly, silly way here, this is very silly, don't actually do this here, that I got my adjacent squared, right? Because it was an x squared up there. And then down here, I've got my opposite, don't I? Isn't that my opposite right over here? Uh, dx. I mean... Yeah, but in a way here, you're starting to approach something. Adjacent over opposite, doesn't that lead to you to think something? Like a cotangent? So we're getting closer. Don't do this. But I'm saying that this stuff here is what helps you find uh, actual math terms. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to create, I want to recreate this using trig over here on this side. This will go much faster on all the other problems. I'm just kind of explaining it. So I notice that I'm using uh, this stuff here. Let's do that. I'm choosing these two because they're very simple. Uh, there's no square roots involved. And so what would combine both the adjacent and the hypotenuse together? Adjacent and hypotenuse, something that's really simple with those. Oh, how about cosine? Cosine of theta is my adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? And so that would be, for this case, x over 7. Notice that this is a fairly simple equation. Cosine is equal to x over 7. We like that. I also see, though, this guy right here. I got a whole bunch of square root business. Well, I'm going to choose these two. Now, I, you could choose something else. I'm choosing these two in, on, uh, in specific because they're easier, and I'll show you why. 
Hey, what is opposite and hypotenuse doing together? Opposite and hypotenuse. I think I've seen that before is sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Isn't that correct? And so then I got my opposite is the square root of the 49 minus x squared. And then I have my hypotenuse is 7. So what I want to do is recreate my, I guess, integral stuff here uh, using these guys here. It's not so easy, like straightforward, but I'm going to show you it's, you know, it's a plug it in kind of matter. What I'm going to do is plug, I'm going to uh, actually multiply by the 7 on both sides. And so what I get is uh, 7 cosine of theta, make sure you're doing thetas and x separately, is equal to x. And then I got 7 sine of theta is equal to the square root of the 49 minus x squared. Now, my original was this guy here. Right? So I'm going to plug all that in. You ready? Here we go. I've got 7 cosine theta squared, right? X squared. Uh, and then my square root should just be a straight plug it in. Cosine theta. And then what? D theta? No, 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 no. <clears throat> this is dx. It still is dx. Did I ever plug it in? Did I ever solve for dx? Mm -mm. It's still a dx. I'm just being straight up with you. A lot of times I mix up variables anyways. So this shouldn't come as much as a surprise. The problem is, is that we can't just integrate it looking like this. This is not going to work. And also it's kind of difficult. So what I want to do is I want to figure out what dx is supposed to be. Let me go back to some basics. See, I have this x is equal to cosine 7 cosine theta, right? Well, what if I took a derivative implicitly on both sides? So then, I know I'm just throwing some funny words out there. X prime is, you know, basically dx, derivative of this guy here of cosine, makes a negative sine. Theta, d theta. Remember? D theta. It's just kind of like a u substitution kind of thing. You're actually doing implicit differentiation every time. Did you know that? So I now have my 7 cosine theta squared, 7 sine theta, negative 7 sine theta d theta. Everything is now thetas. <gasps> All right, cool. Now what? Well, first off, there's a ton of sevens going on, isn't there? So there's squared seven right there. So there's like two sevens and there's one seven right there. So I can at least cancel that square with this guy, I guess. But then again, this seven and this seven could cancel. This minus sign can come out to the front. I can make the 49 come to the front. Also, sine is in the numerator, sine is in the denominator. So negative 49 integral of cosine squared theta d theta. Okay, well, that was easy. <laughs> Uh, we did this problem, at least I'm pretty sure, we did this problem uh, in the last uh, section. If not, there's actually a formula for this, which there are some formulas that you probably ought to write down, and this is definitely one of them, uh, because it's just so easy to just say, oh, that's a formula, I know that one, uh, without having to go through all of the math every time, because it, it does take forever. And then plus C. Okay. So uh, all of this here was your integral of the cosine squared. It's just a formula, okay? Just whatever. I guess you could solve it on your own if you like. Um, so now what, right? Well, you can't leave it as theta. You have to actually go back. And uh, I know that x is equal to 7 cosine theta. So that's really nice, right? So um, I guess I could solve for cosine that way. Oh, yeah, don't I have the 49 minus x squared is equal to 7 sine theta? Couldn't I just, like, move that over to the other side, right, solve my for my sine? And what about my theta? Just theta, not sine theta, not cosine theta. What do I do? Well, let me rewrite this real quick. So what I'm saying is that I got x over 7 is equal to cosine theta, right? What if, what if? I did the arc cosine on both sides. Ding, 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 ding. And now I can actually just plug that in directly. So uh, here we go. Oh, no more integrals. We're, we're done here. And there's a half, but I guess you, whatever. <laughs> so I've got arc cosine of x over 7 
plus, and I got my sine here. So I got uh, my square root of 49 minus x squared all over 7 times. And then here, I've got my x over 7 for my cosine. Close, close, plus c. And sorry, it's kind of sideways a little bit, but, well, there you go. Um, you could simplify for sure. There's going to be a 49 business. The 49 is canceled, but the 2 can still can be there. Blah, blah, blah. We're done there. Um, in fact, hold on. I got a negative somewhere. In, no, yeah, I got a negative out in the front. Okay, yeah, we're good. We're good. That's the answer. Okay. Uh, yeah, hold on. Web assign. They have arc sign. Blah, blah, blah. They don't have arc cosine. They have arc sine instead but it should work. They are equivalent in this particular case. Isn't that reassuring? Do you trust me on that one? 73013. I don't even wait for a response. Well, this is a recording, of course. Zero to A. Oh, you got 11A in there. Uh, DX. And then I've got my a squared plus x squared, and then all to the three halves power. They say that a is greater than zero, and uh, go ahead and solve. <laughs> what? Right, right. So this is why I do these problems because they're uh, difficult. They're at least difficult to understand. Like, what are we supposed to do? So draw a triangle. Uh, I'm going to say that. What's the first step? Draw a triangle every single time. Notice that I know this doesn't look like a square root, but it is. It is. It's a square root. And, and notice that it's a plus sign. So what I'm saying is that that is the hypotenuse. The only way to get a plus sign whenever we're talking about triangles is to say x squared plus y squared is equal to r. Well, r squared, square root, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is my hypotenuse, this whole thing right here. This whole thing right here. Uh, is my hypotenuse. And so what I'm going to actually write is that this is a squared plus x squared and then the square root of it, leaving me then with an a and an x. Now you can do x and a. Either way is fine. You should, you will get the same answer in the end, the same equivalent answer. Um, it, you, you just might get different kind of uh, formulas along the way, I guess you can say. Okay, so either way is fine there. So I constructed my triangle, and what I'm actually looking at here is my hypotenuse cubed, right? That's what that three means there. It's cubed. Kind of weird, but let's, let's just work on some equations here. These two here are going to be pretty simple. So I got adjacent. I got hypotenuse. That's going to be a cosine. Cosine theta is equal to a over the square root of a squared plus x squared, right? That's pretty simple. We like that kind of guy. Uh, and that's an A, not a 9. Everything that looks like a 9 around here, that's an A, okay? A, okay. Uh, here's another. Uh, so that's really cool. I'm going to use that here in a second. In fact, what you could do to be more technical is move these guys around. A squared plus X squared is equal to A over the cosine of theta. And then you can cube the whole thing and it'll just plug right in. I'm going to also use these two right here because, again, they're pretty simple. And so uh, in this particular case, I have, um, I guess I have a tangent, don't I? Did I use a tangent in the, in the last one? Hold on. Give, give me a second right quick. Yeah, I did not use it. Okay, see? So watch out. You, you know, you're looking at it. You're using, using sine, cosine, or tangent. And in this particular case, if I put these two together, I get a tangent, uh, which is actually pretty simple. Tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. And I can solve for uh, x. Ooh, that's an a tangent, not arc tangent. Of course, they had to make an a in here, not some other letter. Now, I chose to get this not because I'm going to try to plug it in right there, because that'd be almost silly. Um, it, would, it would not help. But what it does help with is my derivatives. And so if I take a derivative of this guy, what's the derivative of a tangent? Is secant squared d theta. So I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to plug those back, both in. So now we got 6 integral of, and uh, we got dx is supposed to be all this stuff up here, a 
secant squared theta d theta. And then this bottom again is cubed. It's the square root that's cubed. That's why they have the three halves there. So I'm going to say it's a over cosine cubed. Nothing else. That's it. So this is already in the denominator. And so you're going to want to move him up to the top anyways. And uh, your a's can come out to the front. So I got an a and then I got an a cubed down here. Integral of I have secant squared. And when I move this guy to the top, I actually get just a cosine squared. Do you see something interesting? These guys cancel. Well, yeah, but is there something more interesting than that? These guys cancel. Yeah, exactly. This is 1 over cosine, and that's cosine. They cancel, make a 1 right there. Isn't that awesome? So this ultimately ends up being a pretty simple problem in the end. So you now have a theta, right, plus c. But theta, of course, is not your final answer. You can't really say, oh, theta. Uh, you have to use x's and stuff. So I'm going to use the simplest one that I have. Um, tangent? Tangent's pretty easy, I guess. Um, what did I use on my paper? Oh, I messed up something along the way. Hmm. Hold on. I got my cosecant. I got my square root thingy. Ah, did you see it? Did you see where I messed up, guys? It's still a pretty simple problem, but I messed up somewhere. Let me back up. This happens all the time. You should be used to this by this point. Do you see something else that I messed up on right here at this point? It's very simple, very small. That was cubed. This is cubed. And so, yeah, a lot of them do cancel but it leaves a cosine behind. That's why I have the notes. Okay, uh, still pretty simple because what's my integral of cosine is just gonna be a sine and then plus C. So this is this is true now, we're, we're good. And yeah, I verified now we're, we're on the right path now. Um, the thing is, is that it's still a definite integral. Sorry, I messed up guys, I didn't mean to. Um, x equals 0, x equals a. Notice that it's x's, not thetas, and so we're still going to have to plug it in. Is there a sine somewhere? Did I have a sine equals something or other, sine equals something or other? No. Can I just go back to the triangle and say, what is my sine equal to? So my sine is these guys, right? x over the square root. And so I can now say this is going to be x over the square root of a squared plus x squared. There's no cubes or squares or nothing. And now this from 0 to A. Um, plug this in. Plug in the 0 as well. You need both of them, actually. So I've got A over, and this is A squared, and A squared makes 2A squared, the square root of that. So I basically get A square root of 2 minus, plug it in a 0, uh, actually just zeroes it out, so I don't worry about that. Uh, these will cancel. And so, yep, that's exactly the answer I got. I got uh, 6 over a squared, square root of 2. Now, does this problem randomize very much? No. Can you just figure out a, do I want to say it, a pattern? But that's not the point. If it were just all about patterns, well then, I mean, you're not learning math. We're doing the homework to train ourselves in order to do the, the harder problems too. Okay, cool. I don't care if you get the right answer or not on a homework, whatever. Uh, I'm more concerned about your exams. <laughs> so two to five of dx over x squared minus one to the three halves. All right. What tells me that this is going to be a trig substitution? Well, this is technically square root. You see that? Uh, the square roots really give it away because you're always going to have a square root somewhere on your triangle using Pythagorean theorem. Notice that there's a minus sign in between. And so I get to choose which one that is. Uh, I'm going to say that it's this guy right here, x squared minus 1. This makes this a 1, and this makes this an x, okay? So just looking right here, I say Pythagorean theorem 
There's got to be something like this in the end. Um, let's use these two because they're really simple here. So that's going to be a cosine theta is equal to 1 over x. I could solve for x right quick by moving some stuff around. And so I've got my x is technically equal to a secant. I could take a derivative. Derivative secant is secant tangent. d theta. And so what I did is I just found what I'm going to plug in for my dx right up at the top. Uh, what about these two? These are pretty simple. Again, I'm, when I say simple, I'm using the constant term with it. C using the constant term, using the constant term. Uh, that way you don't overcomplicate everything. Okay, But this particular one's going to be a tangent. And so then I've got my opposite over adjacent. Notice this is why it's simple. Because there's a 1 right here. Right? It goes away. Wow, that looks like you, you can plug it in directly. <laughs> right? Okay. So integral now of, I got my secant, my tangent. Ah, oh, I'm using x's. Totally wrong. False. Okay. Much better. Um, and then down at the bottom, I've got my tangent theta, and all of that stuff is going to be cubed. See the cube right there? Okay. Well, I can cancel a little bit. Notice one tangent up here, two tangents down there. And so I've got now secant, and then ultimately times cotangent squared. Because he's in the bottom, I flipped him up. I don't know if that was a safe move or not. Uh, rewriting this, what I actually get is a cosine. No, 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 I'm sorry. Let me start over. It's 1 over cosine. And this guy is a cosine squared over sine squared. One of these will cancel. So now I've got my cosine theta divided by sine squared theta and then d theta. Um, I'm going to do a u sub. u is equal to sine squared theta. du is equal to 2 sine of theta. Um, times cosine theta, d theta. Is that how that works? So uh, take my derivative. Basically, I have... Actually, this is not really helpful at all. <laughs> it was just such an automatic process for me. Sorry, let's just pause for a second here. Um, this is not going to be helpful because, look, with my du, uh, it's not really going to show up. That didn't work. You ever do that? You ever just do a u sub and you're like, oh yeah, I just automatically understand and do the product rule or whatever. Well, hold on, hold on. What if I did u is just equal to sine itself? So then my du, uh, derivative of that would just be my cosine, isn't it? And that is exactly the same as this guy. So you don't have to divide or plug in or nothing. It's just already done. Uh, du over u squared. Uh, well, that was it, actually. So, Cool, cool. Uh, I don't like integrating like that. I always like to do, um, I guess you could say, like, integer powers. Integer, like, negative could also be up there. Um, and so then I add one to the power, and I divide by the new power. It's not a de Oh, it is a definite integral. Okay, from x is equal to 2, x is equal to 5. We're not there yet. Of course, that looks silly, so I do this. And then I know what my u is. It's a sine uh, theta, right? <laughs> okay, sine theta, right, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Go way back up. And what sine of theta? Well, I'm going to use these guys here. Opposite over hypotenuse. See, I have to convert like twice. So my sine of theta was opposite. Oh, man. Is it, is it this guy over hypotenuse? Now I can do 2 to 5. That's why I always write these x equals and stuff like that, just to be extra sure. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, that's good. Well, that's obviously really annoying. And so... <laughs> Uh, we got negative x over the square root of x squared minus 1 from 2 to 5. Plugging in the 5, we get 
a lot of math. And then plugging in the two, we get a whole lot of math. So I got 25 minus that is going to be square root 24. Two negatives make a positive. Four minus one is going to be a three. And yep, I stop right here. Do not simplify. Do not simplify. It would just take longer than you already took. It's already been a long problem. You don't want to keep going. You're done. Next problem. I got integral from zero to six dt over the square root of 36 plus t squared. Now, pause for just a second because this is a classic problem. Um, <laughs> like straight up, I'm just looking at my uh, answers here and it says, hey, I think that the answer is arctangent. And it might be, um, I'm looking around and seeing is there just a way to say, oh, it's the arc tangent? Mm, maybe not. It's okay. Uh, what I'm saying is that sometimes there's a formula and you can just look at it. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. So I'm going to do it the long way, of course. It's kind of the point here. Um, but it's simple enough that you can kind of see some particularities. Like here we got a 6 squared. And so uh, I could start constructing my triangle at least. Remember that this square root has a plus sign in there, so that must be the hypotenuse. I'm going to put a T right here and a 6 right there. Uh, actually, no, I won't, because my notes don't have that, and I don't want to be contrary to my notes right now. Because <laughs> what if I mess up? And then I can't look back and say, oh, yeah, that works. I don't know. Um, we'll get the same answer either way, but I chose this on my notes, so I'm going to do that for this problem as well. Um I don't know what WebAssign chose. They always do their own thing. What's easy to pick? Well, these guys are pretty easy. Notice a constant term, something simple. So I got tangent of theta is equal to t over 6. I can move this over to get a t is equal to 6 tangent. I could take a derivative of that. Derivative of this would be um, derivative of tangent is secant squared t theta. So that's going to be a plug it in kind of thing here in a minute. Um, this guy's pretty easy. Again, I'm using the constant term here as much as possible. And so that would be a cosine theta is equal to 6 over the square root. And to get my square root by itself, um, I'm going to move this over and divide. Something kind of like that is okay, I guess. Or you could say a secant, 6 secant theta. Uh, and so I'll plug that in here as well. Here we go. So now I've got integral. dt is going to be a 6 secant squared theta d theta. In the bottom, plugging it straight in, is a 6 secant theta. Cancel one of these guys. Cancel both of the 6s. So basically we ended up with this guy here. Yep, that's what I got in my notes. Now... Can you just find out what that secant integral of secant is? Uh, yeah, it's a formula. <laughs> exactly. Uh, don't waste your time. Just there are some of these very basic ones that are just formulas. This is a formula. And uh, we actually did it in the last section, I believe. It's secant tangent. Well, secant plus tangent inside of the ln. Again, this is still t equals 0 to t equals 6. We are not yet back in the t land. And so I need to go back and find out how to do this. And this is probably why I like this problem in particular, because I need to find out what is this secant and what is this tangent. Well, I can say, well, oh, secant right here is equal to whatever. That's fine. That's fine. But like, what if I went back to the triangle itself? Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. And so I'm going to literally plug that in. Uh, it was a 36. Yeah. Plus T squared all over t, and then tangent, going back up, I already have tangent right there, but tangent is opposite over adjacent, so t over 6. And that's what I got in my, hold on, hold on, this is a 6 right here. Here, hold on, I can actually erase it, yeah. Okay, that's a 6, my bad, that was, that was wrong. Uh, from 0 to 6. So plugging in the 6, 
I'll get 36 plus 36 is 72, the square root of 72, I, I guess. You don't, there are ways to make it easier, of course. Uh, it'll end up being square root 2 in the end. Uh, and here we'll get 6 over 6. Awesome. Ln of plugging in a 0, I get square root 36 is 6 over 6 is a 1, uh, plus 0 here is a 0. Ln of 1 is a 0, so you can just go away with that. Again, I said that this is square root 2. So that's my answer is square root 2 and then plus 1 inside the ln. And there you go. Next problem. And I got a lot of them. <laughs> so I really like doing different kind of problems. I'm not trying to do repeaters. Obviously, um, so far, they all have a similar style. But they, to me, they always have something a little bit different, and that's interesting and fun and important to discuss. There's that square root again. He's really screaming at me that it's a trig sub. He's got a plus sign, so that must be the hypotenuse. I'm going to put an X here and a 5 here because uh, actually that's not what my notes have. You know what? I'm going to be daring. I'm going to be daring. I'm going to do the same thing. And we're going to get the same equivalent answer. Yep. My notes have an answer for when I have a 5 and an X. Now I'm going to do an X and a 5. Let's do it. We got to do it. We got to do it. We got to test this out, right? Right on a, on a recording. Um, <laughs> great time to test this thing out. These guys right here. So I've got tangent of theta is equal to 5 over X. If I move some stuff around, I get 5 cotangent theta. My derivative of that would be derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. And that is probably why I left it uh, with the 5 and the x instead of x and 5. Because what I'm getting is like cotangents and cosecants. And honestly, between you and me, I don't think like that. I think secant tangents. And that's what my notes say is secant tangent all the way through. Uh, and so... Well, we're going to do it this way. I said I would, but it's one way could be easier than another uh, for you. And yes, there are patterns to which way is easier than others. Um, you can discover them as you go. These guys right there, that's going to be a sine theta. It's going to be 5 over the square root. So to get my square root by itself, I'm going to do this guy here. And that's going to be a cosecant. Again, all these cosecants flying around. Okay, here we go. So I got a 5 cosecant theta. Yep. And then in the bottom, I actually have this guy here. See, it's an x. 5 cotangent theta. And then my dx is going to be all this stuff here. Negative 5 cosecant squared theta d theta. All right, these fives cancel. That's about it. <laughs> so negative uh, five will come to the front. I've got one over sine. My cotangent in the bottom is a tangent in the top, which is basically a sine over cosine. And then I got cosecant, which is again one over sine squared this particular time. These can cancel, so I got that far, and so I'm kind of stuck. And I'm going to look at my notes to see what I did here in just a second, because at this point I'm like, uh oh, turn around, don't drown. Um, apparently, I use secants and tangents all the way through, and that was a lot easier. <laughs> Okay, I guess. Um, I don't want to turn around. I want to see if I can figure this thing out. Apparently, I converted way earlier on. So, uh, I said something like over here. I said my cosecant squared will be like a 1 plus cotangent squared or something like that. Isn't that the formula? And so what I want to do instead is I'm going to do this here for just a second. Um, and then right here, I'm going to convert that into a cosecant squared again. 
That way I can convert this guy over uh, to some kind of a cotangent, I guess you can say. Was it? Yeah, it was still a cosine over there. Um, so this guy here, I believe it's 1 plus cotangent squared theta. Let me just think about that for a second. So, um, and again, I just don't have it with me. <laughs> so look how prepared I am. Um, I've got my cotangent is cosine over sine, and that dude is 1 over the sine. And if I make a common denominator, I got a sine squared cancels 1 plus. I think it's going to be a minus then. I think that's going to be a minus. Well, if I mess up, I'll come back to it. How about that? Um, no. No, never mind. It is a plus. It is a plus. Yeah, it's a plus. Okay, we're good. We're good. It's, it's a plus. It should be fine. All right. So that's what I did. And now what? <laughs> I'm going to distribute that to both of these guys. Hopefully this will, you know, I don't know, help. So I got secant theta by himself. And now I've got a secant theta, and then I've got this cotangent squared theta. Again, you might be thinking, well, that don't help at all. Um, well, you're right. <laughs> so maybe there's something to it let's keep going again i should have gone down the correct path, not the correct the 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 path that i had already chosen this is one over cosine right here there's going to be a cosine squared over the sine squared and i feel like i'm just repeating myself but uh let's cancel that no no this, this is good this is good uh wait no not really maybe Hold on. Keep going, keep going. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. So I got secant on this side, right? That at, le at least I got something there. And then I've got 1 over sine. And then here I've got cosine over sine. Do you see the clearing out of the woods? No, me neither. But we're almost there. We're almost there. This is a perfect example of some ways are harder than others. So yeah, indeed, you should uh, turn around, don't drown, because this stuff gets cray-cray real fast, like, 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 there's a d theta there, I just never wrote it. Okay, this is somewhere getting getting better, I think. So, uh, right here, doesn't that feel like it's a derivative of something? What's my derivative of cosecant, and you're going to say it's a negative cosecant cotangent, and that's what's going on here. I'm just now going to go in reverse. So I have my secant theta over here, which, again, there's a formula for that. I'll remind you of that here in a second. On this side, I'm just going to replace my whole integral here, all this guy, with this uh, business right here, just uh, cosecant, not x, theta. Uh, this was not a definite integral, so I just put a plus C here. Uh, what's the formula for this guy? Was ln of secant plus tangent. Almost there, almost there. And then again, we have all these thetas, so I need to go back and uh, use my triangle. I'm just going to redraw it because it's so far up there. Um, I had a 5, nope, I had the 5 over here. Remember, I, I've changed it in my notes. That's a 25 plus x squared. Okay. Okay, here we go. So close to the end. Secant. Secant is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. No, that's my cosine, so I'm going to flip it. Hypotenuse over adjacent. Okay, tangent is my opposite over adjacent. Oops. And then cosecant is going to be the opposite of my sine, so 5 over this, well now it's this over that. Plus C. Uh, these 5's cancel, those can combine some, uh, like I did that in my notes. 
Okay. And uh, that's apparently the answer. So it is just slightly different than what I have in my notes. I'm going to call it that it's probably equivalent. Uh, the only difference that I'm seeing here is that I have, and I'm going to show you the difference. Again, this could be what WebAssign has given, and then I already had figured it out and did something different. I don't know. They changed that right there to a plus. They have this one here as a minus, and they had this one here as a plus. Everything else is exactly the same. So does that just make it equivalent? You can just change some signs, call it a day? Well, I mean, actually, yeah, maybe. Uh, there's some log rules going on, and then here we have the square roots, and who knows. Uh, I'm going to call it, and if not, at least I told you what, what they're going to have or what I had whenever I flipped my 5 and X. Okay? So good demo of, hey, sometimes it's harder one way than another way. Okay. We're going to keep going. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it on that problem. Because at least we got something super close. Um, I would definitely try that in WebAssign before I say, oh, it's wrong because it's not the same. Uh, it's probably the same. Okay. That's a 25, by the way. So they say, hey, figure out this integral. Again, this is a super basic integral. There's probably going to be some easy formula for this that I, I don't know right now. There's got to be something. Um and so I'm just going to approach this, though, like I should, so I can train myself. Um, and I'm going to say that this is a triangle. Square root says uh, it's positive, so it's the hypotenuse. I'm going to choose 5 and an x this way because apparently that's what I did here, and I don't want to go down that road again. <laughs> So I'm going to do that, and it's going to be great. I choose these guys. Tangent of theta is x over 5. Move the 5 over. x is equal to 5 tangent theta. So my dx could be um, secant squared. And notice that we're getting tangents and secant squareds. Uh, you, might, you, you might not think that's a good thing. You might not think that you think in tangents and secants, but you do. You do. You didn't. You just didn't know it until today. I'm going to use those two. My cosine theta is equal to 5 over the square root. What I want is the square root by itself so I can plug it in. So I'm going to do that. And I got my square root is equal to 5 secant theta. Again, cosine at the bottom is a secant on the top. So these guys right here I'm going to plug in. Here we go. So now this is in, uh, equal to the integral of... 5 secant theta, and then times 5 secant squared theta d theta. So ultimately here, we got 25 integral of secant cubed theta d theta. And um, yep, that's what I got in my notes too. All right, is there a formula for that? Yes. Do you know it? No. Do I know it? No. How do I approach this problem? Well, I actually don't split it up. I'm going to go back to doing this guy right quick and do integration by parts. No! I'm going to say yes! So actually, this and this guy, whoa, put together, I think would be my dv. Uh, because, again, I'm saying this is the derivative, and I want to take an integral of it. And, hey, do you know what the integral of secant by itself is? Yeah, it's the ln of secant plus tangent. We've done that now three or four times. Uh, right. Is that something easy? No. <laughs> but what about this guy? What if I was going to integrate that guy? What's the integral of that? Or rather, what if I went on the side and said, what's my derivative of a tangent? And you're going to say, oh, yeah, it's secant squared. Exactly. Very simple. On the flip side, I'm going to choose this, well, choose this as my uh, single u. What's the derivative of secant? Secant tangent. 
d theta. And so my answer is going to be uv minus integral v du. So I got my secant, my tangent, minus integral of v du. And you might think that that really didn't help much. Probably not. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we're just trying stuff out here. I'm going to look ahead in my notes a little bit, and I see, I see, I don't know what I'm seeing. So I'm seeing some craziness. I'm going to do some sine and cosine action over here. And so notice that we got tangent squared, and we got my secant. And so technically what I have is my, my sine is squared in the top, and I've got cosine in the bottom, cosine in the bottom, cosine in the bottom. I got three cosines in the bottom. Make sure that's a three. I've already messed it up once today with the cube and the square. Uh, so watch out for that. Okay. Well, the top here I can rewrite with the Pythagorean theorem stuff. Oops, that's a minus. As one minus cosine squared. That's still a cube in the bottom. Still a cube. I could distribute... Uh, my cosine cubed. Is that what I want to do? Mm, yeah. Yeah, it is, actually. Of all the things, that's, yes, what I want to do. And so two negatives make a positive. Here, I'll just get a plain old secant. Okay. Um, pause. This is one moment that we need to pause. Okay. Do you see this right here? You see that? Uh, we're going in a circular motion here. Uh, back in 7-1, I think, yeah, 7-1, there was a problem with e to the x, sine of x, or something like that, and uh, we had to double back on ourselves to be able to figure out the answer. At some point, did I see co uh, secant cubed? And yeah, it was right here. And notice, equals, 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 equals. This is still equal. All of this is equal to, oh, where's my 25? Matt, forgot my 25. Uh, so let's do a 25 <laughs> for each one of these. It's okay. It's okay. He's still there. It's okay. 25 is still equal to 25 integral of secant cubed uh, theta d theta. Okay. My point, my point is that all of this still equals this guy. And so what I'm going to do is distribute my 25. I really hope you can tell that I'm not perfect. That's okay. I don't think you are perfect either. Nobody's perfect. But um, it's okay to make mistakes because you learn from them. Try to get a little bit more room. This whole thing here still equals 25 integral of secant cubed d theta. I'm going to add 25 integral secant whatever to both sides, okay? Making on that side over there 50. And do you know what the integral of secant is just by itself? Do you remember it? Yeah, I just told you. It was uh, ln of secant plus tangent. Now on this side, we got 50 integral secant squared cubed. Cubed d theta d theta. Phew. Now, pause for just a minute, okay? What I really want from in the end, like equals blocks, right? What am I going to do is still... 25 secant cubed. I need this side to end up looking like 25 integral secant cubed. I need this to solve for my answer. Okay? What am I doing to the 50 to get it back back down to 25? Oh, I'm minus 25. No, no, no. No, you just did that. You just did that. So what else can you do? You cut it in half, don't you? So what I'm going to do to get it to this, so I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. So now these guys make my 25. That's what I wanted. But over here now should be 
the correct numeric answer. This is calculus too. Did I ever say it was easy? No. Definitely not. Um, sorry. I just really didn't like that plus sign. It was just kind of meh. Okay. Is now equal to whatever the 25, which I was supposed to be getting anyways. Um, yes. Well, we're still not done because we got all those thetas everywhere. Ha ha. So we got to go back to the triangle again. Did you think we were over with this? No way. When are you ever over with this stuff? I guess in 10 weeks. <laughs> um, at the end of the class. 16 weeks if this is going to be a... I'm recording this during the summer, by the way. Uh, so 16 if it's in the fall or the spring. 10 if it's in the summer. Okay, uh, moving on. Sorry. Um, what is my secant equal to? Secant is going to be square root over 5. Hey, what is my tangent equal to? It's x over 5. And so on and so forth, all the way down. Square root over 5. Uh, x over 5 ln of uh, my secant, again, is the square root over 5, x over 5. That is, it's on another page. That's still not your answer. No way it's still your answer. No way, because... Guess what? It was a definite integral. Zero to five. From zero to five. Oh. <laughs> five. Putting it in here. I get 25 and 25 makes five square root of two. Those fives cancel, leaving just a square root two. Uh, we got a 5 over 5 here. It's going to be a 1, so those cancel. So far, I've got 25 over 2 times the square root of 2. Okay. Uh, plus, here I plug in a 5. Again, I get 25 and 25 makes 50. That's 25 square root 2. No, that's 5 square root 2. 5 square root 2. Uh, and the 5s cancel, so you get a square root 2. Here, 5 over 5 is a 1. And so I get my 25 over 2 ln of the square root of 2 plus 1 minus, and I'm plugging a 0. Square root of 25 is going to be a 5. 5 and 5 cancel. The 0 just cancels everything here anyways. Uh, 0 here cancels, but notice again, 5 over 5 is a 1. ln of 1 makes a 0, so 0, I guess, plus 0, whatever. You don't need it. Uh, and so this now, this is now your final answer. And yes, that is it. I'm not even going to rewrite it. Whew. Surely we're almost done with this section. Uh, I got one more problem. Two more problems. Three more problems. Can I just like skip some of these? Um... <laughs> If I'm doing them, it's because they're interesting and important to you. There, There's honestly uh, a couple sections coming up where it's very crazy amount of problems, and they're all super tough. And I've just got to – I just can't do them all uh, because they're all very interesting and good, but I just can't do them all. So I'm just going to do the best I can. Same, same with any homework section, honestly. Okay, this guy seems innocent enough. I'm going to just set this thing up for you. I don't, I don't think I'm actually going to spend all the way through because it's, it really is a copy-paste. But I want to at least get you down to what we need to do, okay? So here's some steps in the middle. First off, this is not good enough for any kind of triangle. What we need to do on the inside is we need to complete the square. As if it doesn't get hard enough, you already have got to do other things just to get it into trig form so that you could do a triangle and start doing blah, 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 right? Exactly. So complete the square. If you haven't done it in a while, basically you take the middle term, divide it by 2, you get a 1. And then you take that answer and you square it, and you, well, you get a 1. And then that's what you're going to add and subtract from in order to get a more complete answer. Plus 1, minus 1. 
But I'm doing that because right here, the first three always end up being a perfect square. And guess what? It's this term here that goes right there. Okay. Now, what I actually have is uh, Pythagorean's th theorem stuff. My hypotenuse is x plus 1. I chose a 1 right here, and therefore my square root is going to be all this stuff here. Awesome. And then I go through and solve and everything, and what you actually end up having in the end here is integral of tangent theta and then secant tangent theta d theta. Um, what I do is I combine these guys into tangent squared, which this one here converts into secant squared minus 1. You still have a secant. And then I distribute to make secant cubed minus secant and you know what's funny is that we just had this as a formula. We just had this last time. We just had this. And all you have to do is go back to the last problem. And remember we had the 25 or whatever, right, right? Just get rid of the 25. So get rid of the 25s, and there's your answer for what that, ans for what that is, okay? And again, the secant, we already know that one because it's going to be the um, – the integral is the ln of uh, secant plus tangent, that kind of thing, okay? So <laughs> I even said in my notes here, formula this time, and I did, and it was not too bad. Uh, you end up with, and I'm just going to give you some intermediate steps here. I got one half of secant tangent minus one half ln of the secant plus tangent. Remember how I said uh, this guy was... Uh, from last time, okay? Again, just remove the 25s. I don't know why I have a minus in there, though, instead of a plus. Eh, whatever. Uh, it works, I guess. <laughs> There's so many equivalent answers, it's just kind of crazy how that works. But uh, th just roll with this, and it'll be great. Um, and then I have to go back and plug in my x's, and I'm just going to go ahead and give that to you in the very end here. It's x plus 1 over the 1 square root of the x plus 1 squared minus 1 all over 1 ln of basically the same thing, x plus 1 all over 1, and then the square root of x plus 1 squared minus 1 all over 1. And you don't have to divide by 1, obviously. Um, I have a plus c somewhere, but then all of a sudden it's gone. I don't know. I'm going to put a plus c in, well, call it a day. Um, did, was it a definite integral? I don't think so. So I skipped a ton of steps, but I just wanted to show you uh, some of the particulars. Complete the square. Complete the square to get it into a form that looks better. Now, why does this look better? This is technically right here a square, so we're talking right here is my hypotenuse, and this right here is either the opposite or the adjacent, whatever one you choose. Uh, here I chose the adjacent, of course. Um, so you just have to be a little bit more aware of how to apply and look for that. We did a lot of math here, blah, 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 to get to that, of course. So we plugged it all in, and here's some just steps along the way. Definitely use a formula. Don't waste your time on that again. You just did that problem. Uh, and then we move on forever and ever. Okay. Next one. Gosh, this is getting a long video, isn't it? I don't know what the timer's ticking, but uh, it's it's long. It's a long video. There's going to be some other ones coming up that are equally long. Um, I actually think that as we continue in the class, it gets easier. Uh, my notes certainly get easier, so surely the class lectures will get easier too. Okay, so we've got a lot of stuff here. What's going on? I'm just going to try to set this up as best I can. What if, what if I said u is equal to my sine of t? So then I've got, and this is just box. So du would then be cosine of t dt, and you can see that directly right here without without having to worry. So I've got t is equal to zero, t is equal to pi over two of now du over the square root of one plus u squared, uh, and there you go. Again, I feel like that I've seen this before, and maybe there's a quick formula for this one and not others. 
but you set up your triangle just like last time, every time. And so this is going to be uh, my, my hypotenuse. I chose a 1 and a U. And then I, I did all the math and plugged it all in. And I got uh, cosine theta and then secant squared theta d theta. Some of this will cancel. Obviously, those are cosines in the bottom. So it ends up with just a cosine in the bottom, which is just a plain old secant, which is our friend today because we have secant plus tangent on our side. Okay. Um, this is still t equals 0 to t equals pi over 2. So I have to go and convert it back. Looking back at my triangle, I do all my stuff here. Let me flip the page. Um, what I end up with here, I'm just going to go ahead and give it to you, is a 1 plus u squared plus u. Again, though, this is still t equals 0 to t equals pi over 2. And so I've got to go and convert my u back. I think it was a sine, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a sine. And so then I've got my sine squared here. Got a sine right there from now finally 0 to pi over 2. And now you can plug those guys in, and you end up getting uh, your classic answer that you've actually seen quite a few times now today. There you go. So if you don't know what the answer is, type in ln square root 2 plus 1, and you might just get it right. Last question. This one's much shorter. I just, again, want to show you what's going on with it. Um, it says find the average value uh, of my f of x equal to square root of x squared minus 1 all over x from 1 to 5. Now, average value is actually pretty simple. Uh, I'm just going to put average over here. My average is going to be 1 over the interval. So 5 minus 1 is only 4. Uh, for, uh, times the integral of that interval, um, along that interval of my function, like that. Now, same old problem like all the other problems. That's a one-fourth now. I can do some trig sub again. My square root is a negative, so it's got to be somewhere over here, I think. I'm just going to put it here if that's okay. That's great. And that's now a 1. This is going to be my x because that was the positive. So he's the hypotenuse. That's my hypotenuse. Okay. Uh, I set all that up. Again, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm just so tired of doing it all. I'm, I'm sorry. I know you got to do it too, but I did it on my notes. Uh, I've done it all. You've done it all. Uh, you're doing it all. Maybe take a break in the middle, you know? I can't take a break really on the on the middle of this kind of lecture-y thing, but on this recording, but you can take breaks. Go make a sandwich or something, you know? Sandwiches are great. Turkey sandwiches with like mayonnaise or mustard um <laughs> you get all the stuff here <laughs> and i end up with an integral of tangent squared theta d theta um well there's a formula for that because i at this point i'm super not wanting to do anything other than formulas uh i can tell just looking at my notes that i'm i'm just trig subbed out and still, this is, oh, this is still x equals 1 to x equals 5. Where are all these formulas? Again, they're just, they're just formulas in the trig, trig integral stuff. It's not in the basic ones. These are the more advanced ones. Uh, but you can go find them. Go write them down. Um, as far as like, hey, what formulas will I need to know for my exam? Because it's proctored, you know, so you got to know which ones. Write it down on a note card and stuff. Uh, well, uh, probably not this one. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to look over the exams and make sure which ones are a little bit better. I'll probably just send out a little announcement or something like that. But um, if you use it on the homework, write it down, even this guy. If you don't use it ever, then it'll probably not show up. That's, that's the best indicator, honestly. So I need to go back and rephrase these guys. Remember that theta by himself is kind of silly? Um, so I have to say, oh, well, there's my theta, so how can I get something out of it? 
well, previously what I had was x is equal to secant theta, so therefore uh, my theta is equal to the arc secant of x. Yep. I know that's really weird, but that is, in fact, the answer. And you're going to plug that in there, along with the other stuff. Um, my eventual answer, I'm just going to skip to the end here, is the square root of 24 minus the arc secant of 5. That's me, again, plugging that in, doing the tangent thing, plugging in the 5, plugging in the 1, and there we go. This is now my final answer. Phew. We're done. I'm done. So thank you very much. Have a great day.